everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about congruence and similarity. We'll start with congruence. Two shapes are congruent if one can be transformed into the other through a sequence of translations, rotations, and reflections. So uh, focus on these two shapes right over here. These two shapes are congruent and we can show that because we can transform this one into this one or this one into this one but i'll go from here to here we can transform this one into this one by using translations rotations and reflections okay um and we're actually going to use all three in this case but uh, you don't have to use all three to show that two shapes are congruent so for example if you only have to use a translation to get from one to the other, then that's perfectly fine. Or if you only have to reflect one of the shapes over some line and that transforms it into the other shape and you don't use rotations or translations, that's fine also. But we are going to use for this particular example, um, translation, a translation, a rotation and a reflection. So to show you how we can do that, we can start by taking this one and uh, rotating it around the point 5, 1. Um, rotating it uh, counterclockwise 90 degrees around this point 5, 1. And that would, that would, uh, we would end up with a shape that looks, I'm not drawing, going to draw it very well. I mean, I'm going to try my best, but I know it's not going to come out great. But you can see how this shape was rotated 90 degrees. That doesn't look like 90 degrees, but that's because I didn't draw the arrow really from... If I'm starting with this line, I should be drawing the arrow all the way over to this line over here. So you can see how it was rotated in a counterclockwise direction by 90 degrees. Okay, so that's how we can start. And then uh, the next thing that we could do is reflect this shape over the line Uh, this is the line x equals 4, because every point on this line has an x-coordinate of 4. So if we reflect it over this line, then I'll just change the color, let's say, to green. We would get something that looks like this. Okay, so this green um, triangle over here is, is like the mirror image of this one over here. So this one reflected over the line x equals 4. And then it's a simple matter to get from this green one over to this one by, let's see, if we go, if we just translate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces to the left and then 1, two spaces down then we can get this corner to this corner and that would also bring um this corner or i should let's use some math vocabulary vertex also if i go six spaces to the left and then two spaces down that would bring this one over to this one and this one over to this one and so on so um if i would just want to draw it as a straight as just one straight diagonal line then it would look like that okay so so that diagonal line is the result of translating six spaces to the left and then two spaces down okay and that would bring it from here to here so we can see that if i first do a rotation and then a reflection and then a translation i can get this shape to transform into this shape right over here Okay. Notice that I did not need a dilation. If I had to use a dilation, then it would not be, then these two shapes would not be congruent. But since I didn't need to use a dilation, 
since I only used translation rotations and reflections, then I showed that this shape and this shape are congruent. Okay. Now, a couple things about congruent shapes. So congruent shapes are the same size and shape. So notice that my original triangle over here is the same size as this triangle, and it's also the same shape. And I don't just mean that they're both triangles. So, for example, this triangle and this triangle, these are both triangles, but they're not the same shape because you can see this one is a lot narrower than this one. Okay, but that's not the case for these two. They're both exactly the same, except maybe that they're um, flipped over with respect to one another. The, one is the mirror image of the other one. Um, but other than that, they have the same size and shape. Okay, and also, congruent shapes have the same side lengths and the same angle measures. So, so in, in this case over here, let me just erase everything right now. So, this side length is the same length as this over here. This is the same as this. And this length is the same as this length. And this angle is the same as this angle. This angle, which is, happens to be a right angle, is the same as this angle, and this angle is the same as this angle. Okay, so if two shapes are congruent, meaning if one can be transformed into the other one using only translations, reflections, or rotations, no dilations, then they'll be the same size and shape, and they'll have the same side lengths and the same angle measures. All right, so let's move on. That's congruence. Let's move on to similarity. Oh. So two shapes are similar if one can be transformed into the other through a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections, and dilations. So very, it's almost the same as congruence, except with similarity, we are allowing dilations to take place. And what happens if we were to, if we dilate the shape? It means the shape gets bigger or smaller, right? So that means that what we're going to see here is that two shapes can still be similar if they're different sizes. All right. So for example, we can transform this shape into this one by using translations, rotations, reflections, dilation. And we don't have to use all of them, but we can use these things. And if we can transform one into the other by using these, um, then, then we will have shown that they're similar. So what can I do with this one to get it to look like this one? Well, what I could start off by doing is I could... Um, multiply all of these points uh, with a scale factor of one half. So I could multiply the, all of them by one, one half. And this point over here, which is at negative two, two, if I were to multiply these by one half, so two, for example, if I multiply that by one half, I could put this two over one, and then I get two times one is two and one times two is two, and two divided by two is one. So that so two times a half is equal to one. So negative two, two, if I multiply both of these by a half, I would get negative one, one, which is this point right over here. Okay, and you could probably tell at this point, when I multiply this point two, two, I multiply each of these coordinates by a half, I would get one, one. And over here, if I multiply these by a half, I would get one negative one. And if I multiply th this point by a half, so negative two, negative two, would turn into negative one, negative one. Okay, so after that dilation, this is the shape that I would get. And then to bring this shape up to this shape, all I would need to do is translate it to, uh, not two, uh, four spaces up. So one, whoa, one, two, 
three, four, just starting from the center of this square here. If I were to move it up four spaces, one, two, three, four, and then you could see that that would be the center of this square over here. So to get from this shape to this one, I would, my steps would be uh, dilate with a scale factor of one half and then translate four spaces up, okay? Now, you think I'm gonna move on to this one now or maybe scroll here, but I'm not done with this over here. What would happen if I did those same uh, transformations, but in the opposite order? So instead of dilating first and then translating, what if I were to translate first and then dilate? Do you think I would get the same result as before? If I translate this four spaces up first and then dilate by a half, do you think that I would get exactly this square over here? Think about it for a few seconds, pause the video, and then come back. All right, so I'm going to assume that you paused the video and you thought about it. Well, let's see what happens. If I were to translate this first four spaces up, then this corner would go up four spaces over here. This corner would go over here. This corner would be over here, and then this corner would be over here. So that would be, that would be the image after the translation. If I then dilate by a half, then what would happen? Well, first let's write what these coordinates are. So this is negative two, two. This is negative two, six. This over here is two, six. And this over here is two, two. So if I multiply these by a half, then I'll use a different color. So if I multiply these by half, so I, which is like dividing by two, multiplying by a half is like dividing by two. Over here, I would get negative one, three. I'm just going to write it over here before I plot it. This would give me one, three. This would give me one, one. This would give me negative one, one. And now let's go ahead and plot those. Negative one, three would be over here. Negative one, one would be here. One, three would be here and one one would be over here so i do end up getting the same the, the size and shape that i want so it is a square and each side length each uh, side of the square has a length of two which is what i wanted because this one over here all the side lengths have a length of two. The problem is it's in the wrong spot. Okay, here, over here, it was centered at the point zero four. Over here, it's centered at the point zero two. So you do have to be careful when you're coming up with a sequence of transformations to get from one to the other. If you change the order, you don't necessarily get the same answers. So if you remember a few minutes ago, we dilated first and then we translated on uh, the translation was we went up by four but for this this one we went with the translation first we went up by four first and then we did the dilation of the half and we ended up not getting uh the image that we wanted so you have to be careful about that all right so let's continue talking about characteristics of similar shapes. So similar shapes are the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So like we said before, this shape and this shape are similar. How do I know they're similar? Because I can get from this one to this one by using rotations, translations, reflections, and dilations. Um, and I can see that they're the same shape. Uh, in this case, both of them are squares. But they're not the same size, obviously, and that's because we use a dilation as one of our transformations. 
Okay, and furthermore, similar shapes have the same angle measures, but not necessarily the same side lengths. So all of the angle measures are the same. So this angle is the same as this angle. This angle is the same as this angle. And in fact, really all of these angles inside both of the squares are 90 degrees. So I'm not going to, I don't, I don't have to go any further than that. So the angle measures, even after the dilation, the angle measures are still the same, but the lengths of the sides are obviously different. So in this square, all of the side lengths are four units long. In this square, all of the side lengths are only two units long. All right. Now, something else that I'm going to mention is that all congruent shapes are similar, but not all similar shapes are congruent. So going back to these triangles over here, these triangles we said were congruent. That's true, they are congruent. We could also say that they're similar. Why can we also say that they're similar? Well, because what's the definition of similarity? If I can get from this one to this one, or from this one to this one, using translations, rotations, reflections, or dilations, then they're similar. All right, and we already showed earlier that we can get from here to here by using, uh, first we did a reflection and then, no, first we did a rotation and then we did a reflection and then we did a translation, okay? The fact that we did not need to use a dilation is okay because to to fit the definition of similarity you don't have to use dilation but you you could all right the fact that we did not use a dilation for this one is all right and it still um it, it still satisfies the definition of similar shapes now, moving on to these shapes over here, we said these were similar. Are they also congruent? Well, the answer is no. These, uh, these squares are similar, but they're not congruent. How do we know that they're not congruent? Because remember, you can scroll back, you can go back in the video if you want to. The definition of congruence is that one shape can be transformed into the other, using only translations, rotations, and reflections. We're not allowed to use dilations. But to get from this shape to this shape, we had to use a dilation. We had to change the size of that shape, right? So that means that these two shapes do not fit the definition of congruence, even though they do fit the definition of similarity. So they're similar, but they're not congruent, okay? All right, and now going over to here, these shapes, um, what do you think about these shapes? Pause the video again for a few seconds, and what do you think? Are they congruent, or are they similar? What are they? Well, the answer is none of the above. These are not congruent, and they're not similar. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, can't we just reflect this one and then dilate it? Well, if we were to reflect this one over the x-axis, here's the x-axis over here. So if we were to reflect it over the x-axis, then it would end up looking um, like this. Well, I didn't. Let me do a better job of that. Okay, so that's if I were to reflect it over the x-axis, I would get the mirror image. So pretend that the x-axis is the mirror. Okay, but then there's no way to get from here to here. You might be thinking, well, can't we just dilate it? It looks like this one is smaller than this one. Can't we just dilate it maybe by some number which is less than one so we would get a smaller image. Well, we could try to dilate it, but if we dilate it, it's going to shrink it horizontally and it's also going to shrink it vertically. Vertically, But you can see here that um, 
to get from the green one, which I drew, to this one, we would only want to shrink it in the horizontal direction. We only want to squeeze it this way. We don't want to squeeze it this way. Unfortunately, that's what would happen if we dilated it. It would, we can't choose to just dilate it this way. If we do a dilation, it's going to squeeze it this way, and it's also going to squeeze it this way. All right? So a dilation is not going to work here because we would need to squeeze it horizontally, but we would need to keep it vertically in the same length. And we can't do that with a dilation. So um, these are not congruent and they're also not similar. So that's neither. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to end the video there and have a great night.